Hey, good morning. Another hey. episode of All Things 3D. And today, special episode on February 25th, 2015. We have Mike is in the field again. What are you out there? Where are, the where, where are you, Mike? I am out at, in San Francisco at the, um, let's see, I guess it's the marina. Uh, it looks like an old and banded Navy uh, shipyard. And they've converted one of the locations um, into kind of an expo. Uh, I think Autodesk is supporting this. It, uh, as you can see there, there's a few people out there. Uh, but essentially, they're going to be running all-day conferences as well as a media lunch. Our Carl Bass is going to be talking again, gosh, at about 11.30. And he uh, is going to be bringing up their new initiative, which is... Uh, what do they call it? Real capture, or um, basically capturing, and um, what do they call it? Real computing. So essentially, they're going to be looking at multiple techniques and digitizing, and then uh, converting that into tangible objects. So kind of like what we've discussed over the the episodes previously. Um, you know, we've had people on from the surveying. If you look right below me, uh, you'll see an aerial capture system. Uh, remember how we had uh, the group from San Luis Obispo come in and talk about that. Uh, right. In the past, we have Matterport. So what else we have? Uh, looks like Shapeify is here, which is interesting. Um, what do we have in the back? So what I was thinking is that I would just go down, and even though we're a half hour late, and nobody's probably looking at this in real time, um, Oh well, I, sorry for being late again. So I'm going to go down. <clears throat> this is a, I guess, a steel environment. So there's a possibility I could lose you, Chris. Okay. So if that happens, I'll just try and reconnect. Uh, right now we're fairly stable. I should just probably hang out here and not go anywhere. But that would not uh, be in our best interest. All right, so I'm going to go head down to the floor. And uh, you can just follow me along. Awesome. And yeah. uh, we're doing two things. One, I'm capturing it with an HD uh, camcorder like we did last time at CES, but I've got a new device to hook up. I have the VR360, so I'm capturing this in a full 360, um, I, can't, I guess it's a panoramic, that uh, in the future YouTube is going to support, uh, and uh, I will upload it as soon as that occurs. We're also going to be doing the interviews with that and other things as well. So you'll be able to choose what you want to look at. I know right now you're looking out here, but if I put up the panoramic camera, you could turn it around and look at me. You know, that might be better. No, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. So, yeah, and it looks like uh, some of the sponsors for Real 2015 are Autodesk, Leica, Topcon, Artec 3 d Faro and there's some other sub-sponsors, so we're going to go downstairs now and uh, check out what's going on on the show floor. Um, Mike always does the virtual walkthrough. I will be joining him live tomorrow, from uh, and we have a couple interviews lined out for tomorrow with some pretty interesting people, so you have to stay tuned with us. Um, the Real 2015 uh, show really focuses a lot more on kind of um, capturing and computing and create. The, the, the tagline is capture, compute, create. And uh, it's all about kind of uh, taking the sensor to the next level, I think, is, is really um, they're going to be showing off new sensor technologies and new capturing methods uh, for the 3D field. So a lot of geospatial stuff. Are you still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, and so let's let's just start right off here in the Leica Geosystems and see if we can get somebody to talk to us. Sweet. Are you picking up that noise on your end? Yeah. Static tech. Yeah. Hi, you guys got a moment to talk? Sure. Hi. Go ahead and take the mic. Okay. So who am I speaking to? Brian Baker with Leica Geosystems. Okay. Um, you mind giving us a brief tour? I notice you've got a, a very interesting system behind you. Yes. Uh, that is our unmanned aircraft system called the Abotics X6 Hexacopter. And it's a commercial 
unmanned aircraft system for photogrammetry and mapping. It allows us to create three-dimensional point clouds that then we can take and extract features from for GIS, construction, land surveying, um, a variety of different applications. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Uh, so what's the resolution, if you don't mind me asking, um, as far as your point cloud that uh, you're able to get out of the aerial system here? And then do you have a price for it? The, the revolution? On the resolution. System? Oh, yeah. resolution on the system. Uh, the system is basically able to give you uh, one to two centimeter accuracy, depending on the quality of ground control points that you're utilizing for your map. And then we can take our aerial generated point cloud and we can combine it with one of our terrestrial based products and create a full ground based and aerial based three dimensional model. Um, do you have any computers set up that I could actually take a look at it or is the video in the background? Is that available on YouTube or? Yeah, all the videos that we have are available on our website and on YouTube as well. So these are just a couple of examples. We have different videos running on different monitors. And okay. uh, one of my colleagues would be able to also explain some of the other technologies. Great. I'm in charge of the unmanned aircraft systems. Okay. And, uh, my colleagues are specialized in the terrestrial scanning and the construction uh, bu uh, building information modeling systems. Okay. And, wh uh, and what does a system like this run? My like co-host is on the other end, which you can't come around here. You can see him, but... Uh, <laughs> He's over here. This is a, a live Google Hangouts on air. Oh, okay. So, uh, what was your question, Chris? I was just wondering. So, what it, what is a hexacopter with a Leica Geo systems uh, and all the software? What it, what it, what does it take to get up and running on one of these? How much? Okay. So, as I, as I mentioned earlier, what does it take to buy a system like that? Your hexacopter. Our systems with training and sensors and processing software run in the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range. So That's they're awesome. commercial grade, um, they're flight tested for quality control and to be able to fly, in this case of uh, our aircraft, we're able to fly in close proximity to structures because we have shrouded rotors. Uh, we have some very advanced fail-safe capabilities. Uh, so it's uh, designed for the commercial environment. We'll be it flying it later on today is from what I understand. Oh. And Okay. And what about do you does it require to or for for FAA or is it required to be tethered? Um, for FAA, is it required to be tethered or can it be untethered? Mm, so, for commercial applications, um, it's, FAA doesn't allow commercial applications unless you have either a, a certificate of authority from the FAA for a public entity like a Department of Transportation, or you have a Section 333 exemption. And uh, there are a number of private companies who have applied for and received Section 333 exemptions uh, to operate commercially, whether a land surveyor or construction company or engineering firm or uh, television movie studio. Uh, those types of entities uh, require the Section 333. And so the FAA is starting to roll those out. Two weeks ago, the FAA released their proposed regulations, part of their rulemaking process, which takes about 12 to 18 months to actually happen, but those proposed regulations are really going to open the door for unmanned aircraft. You'll still have to get, you'll have to pass an FAA written exam, a knowledge exam, uh, but then after that you'll be able to have quite a lot of uh, uh, flexibility in terms of where these are used and how they're used for all types of commercial applications. So the, one of the biggest things that it doesn't allow for yet is flying beyond visual line of sight. So we do need to keep the aircraft within our line of sight to be able to control it, take evasive actions if necessary, and uh, operate the aircraft in a safe manner. Great. Any other questions, Chris? No, this looks great. I can't wait to see the thing fly. Yeah, and what time are you planning to fly it? I don't know yet. I haven't seen the schedule. They haven't come and told me. But, okay. Okay. Uh, Hopefully in the next, uh, hopefully this afternoon. Okay. Well, I think uh, we've only got one interview this afternoon, so maybe it'll be right after that. Hopefully they don't schedule it at the same time. Well, right. thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Brian. So um, you want to introduce me to, to maybe your, your land base uh, scanner systems? Kathy? Kathy? Speak with Michael for a minute. About Just a brief interview. Um, okay, there you go.
and put it about two or three inches from your mouth. A little bit closer. Yeah. You gonna ask me questions? Is that the way it works, or? Yep. Okay, great. Okay. So, Chris, you want to know anything about the? Whoops. Yeah. So, what? Tell us a little bit about these scanners right behind you. Um, go ahead and give us a brief uh, overview of the scanners behind you. Sure. Hi, my name is Kathy Hayes with Leica Geosystems, and we're here today at Real 2015. And today we have a lot of great capture solutions for the building construction industry. So here we have one of our scanners behind me. This is our P15 VIM scanner, and this is a very easy to use one button push scan collection device that will let us capture at a very, very high rate of accuracy at a million points per second. And those scans can then be put together very quickly and easily using our state-of-the-art visual registration software that will you visually match up your point clouds very accurately using our algorithms that will automatically tighten up all the constraints and make it very easy to collect data for the building construction process. The two main use cases are pre-construction and collecting accurate as-built. Say, for example, if you wanted to do a renovation or retrofit of the space, and then also the second really strong use case that we see a lot of growth is in during construction, scanning to make sure that what's being built is actually what was designed. You can take that scan data and marry it back with your Revit model data or Navisworks and see exactly what's been built correctly or not, avoiding a lot of costly rework down the road. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, actually, I, I worked as the IT manager for about 10 years with a firm that four of those years had a Leica system Great, excellent. and they found at that particular time the, the learning curve and the, the operation really wasn't affordable to them. Sure. Um, I'm assuming that's improved since, what was it, 2004? So. Sure, absolutely. We now have the P15 which has been designed especially for the building, building construction industry so we have a very easy one button push. You push the button, it scans, you move it, you push the button and it scans. So much easier, much faster to learn. And our software is much faster, much easier as well, but very accurate. So we've maintained the accuracy of the registration. We made it a lot more easy, or a lot easier, and um, a lot more visual of a process. Well, that's important. And uh, what would a system like this cost? So our scanning solutions range. So um, the P15 is about the $85,000 mark. Um, and that's hardware, software, training, but it depends on the options that our customers would like um, to bundle together with the hardware and software. Okay, Chris, any questions? My co-host yeah. is on the other end. And then I see another, I see another bit, like a another, like something or other over off behind her to the right. What it, what is that? Um, you mean right behind her? Yeah. What is that item the, with the? gray system there. It looks like a backpack of some sort. Sure, absolutely. Should we walk that way? Sure, let's Great. do so. <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> so here at Real 2015, we're introducing or previewing a brand new technology. It's a one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art mobile backpack scanning. So here we have the Pegasus, and the Pegasus T2 is a backpack scanner that includes a scanner and five cameras. And this is indoor and outdoor used for documentation and scanning um, in a BIM environment. They're very fast to collect data. You simply put it on your back, start walking, and if, if you're interior, it's going to use SLAM technology to automatically orient and register together your point clouds. So very simple, very easy to use, very fast data collection, groundbreaking, the only one of its kind in the industry. Now you can walk outdoors and it's going to automatically switch over to GPS. So it's going to use a different technology um, utilizing satellites. So it's a very unique offering. It's not yet in the market, but we're here to do the technology preview. Oh, so we got a prototype here. Absolutely, absolutely. So very, very exciting. And we think this is really going to change the face of building construction, making it a lot faster and easier for that building documentation. How about land surveying? Uh, do you find a use for it there? Sure, we do see a lot more other applications for the backpack scanning as well. So we're, we're seeing a lot of applications in, say, tunnels and railroads and things like that um, where you're collecting a lot of data. And this technology is a mobile technology, which Leica has pioneered our mobile technology on the back of cars. 
And so we've adapted that for the building construction industry. So we do see a lot of other applications, but this particular version is, is really uh, geared toward building construction documentation and scanning. Okay, great. Any questions, Chris? Wow, that is incredible looking. It's got yeah. like blue lights. Uh, those are the cameras, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you are those are the cameras, those uh, mock-ups right there in front? Yes, these are the cameras. Okay. And, 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 and they're they're gonna do. Are you doing camera, a, a, a tech demo of it or something later? Yes, and then the prism. So you can also do indoor tracking with a total station to give you the highest level of accuracy. Wow. But not required. You can just use the SLAM technology when you're on the interior, so it's not required that you have a total station. I can imagine this being used in caves as well. Uh, Absolutely. There's a reason I'm, I'm mentioning that. I'm working on a demo of a VR system that will be a cave, and I'm hoping to get the public domain stuff from France on the two caves there. But we'll see where that goes. But I could see this being used there. Now, this is a mock-up, so you don't actually have a, a working version yet or in the we lab? We do. Um, this one is a prototype mock-up, but we do have a working working prototype. Um, unfortunately, this one's not it. Okay. But we do. Yeah, I, I, but it's back in the lab, right? It's back in the lab. Okay. All right. <laughs> any other questions, Chris? That's it. Thanks so much okay. for being on our... We do have our integrated scanning total station around the corner. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go take that. a look at that. Sure. Perfect. Love yeah. to talk about that as well. Okay. And uh, I don't know if we have any live listeners right now, but it would be awesome if anybody has any questions, just chime in. Yep. We don't right now, but oh well. But go ahead, please. Sure. Absolutely. We also have integrated scanning here at Real 2015. This is another Leica one-of-a-kind innovation. This is a top-of-the-line survey total station, as well as it has integrated high-definition scanning. So extremely accurate instrument that can also do scanning. Okay? So the use case for building construction is quality assurance. So with this instrument, for example, you could do construction layout. So if you want to take a look at right behind me here, so we have Bob, BIM 1 box, and we can lay out, let's see, the columns here on the ground. Now once we lay out the columns, then we can back check, double check to make sure they were installed correctly. And now if we find that one was not installed correctly, we can use the integrated scanning to scan just the column and then round trip that right back into Revit. Everything's automatically oriented, point clouds are automatically registered, so you don't have to do any post-processing, pull it directly by, right back into Revit, and then compare the impact of the construction not being built as designed. So it's a really interesting, um, high-value solution for building contractors, and it's exclusively here at Leica Geosystems. Wow. Pretty neat, huh, Chris? Yeah, that's incredible. So I, I uh, and where can we find uh, some like live demos of their of scan data, data? Do they have that available yet on, on their website? So one of the things that uh, Chris is asking, my co-host, is where can we find live data? So somebody wants to actually see a point cloud. Do you have something on your website they can download to see the quality? Absolutely, absolutely. So we do have uh, TrueView, which is our free viewer. So you can download the free viewer, and it works within Internet Explorer. And then we have some data sets there. So we have a really nice cathedral data set that you can explore, measure, and walk around. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's, you used uh, this system to do that. Systems, just Google us up, and you'll find uh, and you'll find us. And that solution is called TrueView. That's a free viewer that's available to anybody. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real. How funny. Oh, she was okay, great. Chris. That was really let's awesome. Let's moving on. Uh, let's see. She, th they were awesome. That was great. Yep. I uh, I learned a lot. Hey, let's take a look at this. I think they were also at CES. Hi, how are you? Sure, anybody who's willing to provide a few minutes to me. Hi, Ryan, you want to take the mic oh, here? Wow. Well, About two or three minutes, uh, three minutes, uh, to your, uh, pretty close to your mouth. Uh -huh. That's good. Sure. Okay. So what do we have here? So I'm Ryan Tong from DJI. Uh, here we have the new Inspire One. Now, this was at CES, too, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, so this is our flagship product right now. Um, it has a 94-degree rectilinear lens, um, supports 4K and 1080p video, um, RAW, and um, JPEG stills. Um, has about 18 or 20 to 22-minute flight time and uh, retails for about $2,900.
twenty nine hundred. Yes. That's for everything. Yes. So it comes with uh, the camera, the gimbal, the colors, um, the landing gear transforms. Like everything is ready to, to go out of the box. Okay. Um, supports two uh, transmitters. So one for the actual flight controls, and then one for the camera. For the camera yeah. itself. So there's a master and a slave. Right? So what's the quality of the camera? So it shoots 4K um, up to 30p, and then 1080 um, up to 60p. 60. Yes. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So this is all again the price again. Twenty-nine hundred dollars. Twenty-nine. Yeah, around twenty-nine hundred dollars. Yes. Right that's now. pretty impressive. Yeah. So, you know, obviously with the new FCC or FCC um, FAA A. rulings uh, going on, what can we expect from that? Um, yeah. So, so we're we're really going to be uh, making a push. Um, I think in 2015 and beyond to um, help the world understand that this technology can be used for great things um, for you know, commercial applications uh, primarily. Um, I think the hobbyist and consumer market has, you know, taken us pretty far, but um, we'd really, really, you know, like to get penetration in specific verticals, help people in specific industries achieve, um, you know, certain tasks. So um, that's what we're, that's what we're going to be focused on. We've opened up our SDK, our software development kit, um, and, you know, we're anticipating developers um, writing specific software applications, um, you know, to, to take advantage of this hardware. Well, it looks very impressive. What do you think, Chris? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's on my oh, wish list. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's I actually have my co-host. We are live oh, okay. right now. Oh, you're live right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. come on. You can take a look at him. Okay. Little yeah. picture here. <laughs> there he is. Wave, Chris. Oh, hey. hi, Chris. How's it going? <laughs> so, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, he'll be here actually okay. tomorrow. He's coming up tonight. So I noticed you've got some type of um, tablet there. Um, tell Over us here. a little bit about that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, this is the DJI Pilot app. Um, it is our is a new app. Uh, so the Phantom uh, UAVs were primarily being flown uh, on the Vision app, which is our older um, iPhone and Android apps. But Pilot is a new experience. Um, we entirely uh, rebuilt the app, uh, available for iOS and Android. Um, provides really crisp video feed. Um, you can take stills. You can have uh, full camera control. Um, you know, see everything that's going on here um, as you're flying the aircraft. So I've wow. gotten pretty good response on it so far. Well, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. That looks like a seven-inch tablet of some sort. What is it? Do you know? Um, uh, this is an Asus tablet. Okay. Um, but you know, you can fly with the iPhone, you know, 5s, uh, iPhone 6, um, Samsung devices, uh, iPads. So this. Um, Actually, it's a this holder here is actually retractable, um, so it uh, fits a bunch of different devices. Yeah. Very neat. Well, one of the things here is that uh, capturing in 3D. Is there a possibility that you might be working on a aerial 3D scanner of some sort? Yeah. So there's actually quite a few uh, mapping applications and um, mapping software packages that allow you to um, create 3D models out of um, two-dimensional still images. Okay, so you're um, using photogrammetry then? Yes, okay. yes, photogrammetry and lots of other interesting applications for the tech. Oh, for sure. Very interesting. That's yeah. very impressive. Uh, one of the things I've, I've got this new, this is a VR 360, which is a panoramic camera okay. that I'm recording. You should have a red light. Is there yeah, still, okay. there's a red light on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't hope the battery dies out. So essentially, I could probably replace this camera. This also has a 4K in it and do panoramics. Yeah. So that yeah. could be an option. Yeah, I mean, it's really just a platform for a sensor, uh, you know, to help people in different industries achieve different goals. So I think we're, we're really just at the beginning of, you know, what this technology could do. Yeah. For some reason, it reminds me, I don't know, what's that movie, Terminator or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we've, we've been told that it's, you know, very sci-fi-esque. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's very impressive. Yeah. Okay, well, we got to move on, but thank you very much, yeah. Ryan. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Right, great. So you can probably grab. I'm not going to grab any other brochures. I don't have any pockets. So let's see. Um, maybe we can quickly look at Regal. Maybe give us a brief. Uh, so I see a video. Do you actually have? Uh, have a vehicle outside. Oh, it's outside. So you're going to be giving a demo as well. Yeah. So actually, one of our customers has our system. Yeah. Sorry. That's one okay. of our customers has the system outside. It's a VMX 450 mobile scanner. So it's basically measuring at a million points a second. If you want, you know, we can go outside. Um, otherwise, at the show, we don't have any other hardware. So it's really more a display of the technological capabilities, and most of that is displayed on screens today. So seeing the hardware is important, but the sensor is the sensor in principle. 
So what's the price of this system? Um, it depends on which one we talk about. So we make a really large array of sensors. We make sensors that are airborne, UAV platforms on boats, on vehicles, and then static scanners. So if you go at the top end, it's somewhere around a million dollars for a really high-end, high-altitude airborne system. If you go to the bottom end of our systems, which are long-range, outdoor, uh, it's somewhere around 100000 roughly, in that, in that ballpark. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, yeah so our latest, our latest uh, release is the UAV system. So this is the first uh, survey accuracy and survey grade UAV system. So of course there's a lot of smaller systems, but they're not really survey grade. So we really use a high-end IMU, INS, GNSS system with it. The, the UAV system itself, so the copter, we call it the recopter, we designed ourselves, we built ourselves. We really looked for a high, high mass payload system, but we couldn't find one, so we just made it ourselves. So actually, the, the UAV itself weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 kilograms, and then it has a 15 kilogram payload. So it's not a lightweight, it's not a toy, it really is a heavy payload system, and it lasts for 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah, Very that's impressive. powering the scanner, that's powering the INS GNSS, and carrying the batteries, which are most of the payload, actually. Yeah, that's sad. Hopefully, the technology will improve to allow that not to be its heaviest payload. So, Chris, any questions on your end? So, this video, this is a video We're watching of watching a video behind you. Okay. And it's, and it's flying. This is the thing is flying on these, like, above the tracks right now. And is, it, I don't know. Is that actually flying, or is that on a vehicle on a train? This, so, this is the same mobile system that we have outside, but set onto a train. Okay. So, okay. It's mobile yeah. scanning along the like, track. What? <laughs> what you see is looking backwards with the real trajectory. Pretty impressive, though. Thanks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what's the the points? Um, I mean, obviously you got different variation, point cloud um, density, as well as a capture time. Did we talk about that? So it depends on what the application is specifically. Of course, we make airborne systems, mobile systems, and static systems, UAV systems. Um, if you talk about high altitudes, we have airborne systems that go up to twenty thousand feet above ground. Uh, this is getting densities of somewhere around one to two points per square meter, which is really, really high for that altitude. This is a lot of points. Or you can go all the way down to the ground level. If you have a mobile system, you're getting somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 10,000 points per square meter. You can go above that even. It depends on the drive speed that you do and really the level of detail that you need. Wow. Very impressive. All right, Chris, we're going to move on. Thanks. Thank you so much for... Uh... Thank you. Rigel. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's see if we can talk to somebody at TopCon. Hi, you having a moment to speak to us? Let's see, right away. <laughs> I think. Sure. Sure. Day. Hi, name's Mike. Hey, Mike. We're on All Things 3D, and we're Good. actually live right now. Awesome. Yeah. Hi. So, kind of tell us what you are. TopCon Positioning Systems is a Bay Area company out of Livermore, California. And what we do is we add technology to existing uh, applications such as agriculture, construction, survey. And what you're seeing here today is just an example of some of our technology. We've got one of our 3D laser scanners right in front of us. Also, we've got our Sirius UAS, which is basically a, a, a UAV that will fly up and do orthometric photos for digital terrain models, for construction, things of that nature. We can also use it for an ag agricultural applications also. If we go further into the booth, we've got some robotic instruments. These will follow our active prism. And this is more of a survey and construction application. And then over here, we've got uh, one of our 3D mobile mappers that goes on a vehicle. So we can drive down the road, take pictures and scanning, and make three-dimensional models of that, and also use that for design, uh, for a particular application of roadways or, or infrastructure of any kind. So we've got a broad array of, of technologies that we're showing here today to get people to understand where this data comes from. So it really it's all about data capture and creating deliverables for the customer. Incredible. Wow. So, uh, so that, that car, car top, top one. So the car top one, I guess that's behind us? That's correct. Uh -huh. What about and it, Chris? How much does that run? How much does it cost? Uh, that one is in the neighborhood of about three hundred thousand dollars. 
Okay. And, it, and, and it has, would, that's typically a construction company or uh, a company that's doing infrastructure mapping from a roadway. We actually used the, the Topcon product in the Market Street development for the city of San Francisco. Oh. So we did some stuff with Parsons Brinkerhoff and other companies and went through and, and basically collected all the data so they could get a real live three-dimensional look at what that's going to look like. Then they could come on top of that and basically say, okay, now we've got an as-built. What's it going to look like when we finish? Wow. Very neat. Wow, that is freaking awesome. Yeah, so kind of cool stuff. Yeah. So uh, in in uh, in do they also have demos of we can go on their website topcon.com. Do you have any if we go out to topcon.com, I'm assuming? Yep, topconpositionings.com is okay. the website and there you can look at our portfolio of plot products, the applications in the industries that we cover. Okay. And uh is there some point cloud data downloads that we can take a look at uh, some of the samples or videos? Actually, uh, the point cloud data are usually too large just to download. We do have some videos, but anybody who's interested in that, uh, that type of information, if they'd come on to the inquire uh, and put a product inquiry in, we can certainly get back with them with some information or some data sets based on their application and help them with that. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Yep, so thank you very much. No, we thank you. You guys have a great day. Uh-huh, bye-bye. So uh, we might want to line up, like, an interview with any of these people tomorrow if they want to come on and talk with us, you know, at yeah, the show. We can, yeah, we can do that. Uh, let's go through the floor today, and then uh, maybe tomorrow morning um, we can come down here and see if we can line some people up. Hi, you got a moment to talk about what you do? I'm sorry? You got a moment to talk about what you do? Yeah, can you wait? Next door, Sounds good. Right okay. <laughs> Hi, you guys got an opportunity to talk with us a little bit? Sure. Hi, I'm Mike Balzer from All Things 3D. My co-host is on the other end here, and we're live. Right, so cool. kind of give us a rundown of what you do here. All right. I'm Scott Diaz with Qubit. And we basically create Autodesk plugins for AutoCAD and Revit. We take the native Autodesk Point Cloud engine, which can handle billions of points, and we help it do more. We help close the gap to end deliverables for designers, whether that's you know Revit models and BIM, uh, piping design, plant design models, 2D floor plans, anything that the traditional designer needs to create, we help uh, build tools that extract information from the Point Cloud or even uh, run Know, additional analysis on the point cloud, certain reports. So just giving Autodesk a little bit more than what it does out of the box. Okay. So are these plugins or is this a separate application? Uh, these are plugins okay. working directly inside Revit or AutoCAD. Okay. Any questions, Chris? Oh, this is this this is uh, this is just really interesting, uh, re really interesting stuff. So what is a what does a package usually cost for a seed of this? My co-host will ask the pricing. What's the price? <laughs> Uh, pricing always depends on the modules, so most of it uh, ranges anywhere between 1800 to, let's say, top is 5600 So it just depends on the functionality you need, and we kind of help identify, you know, based on what you're trying to get to, uh, what tools you need. Sounds great. Excellent. Very right. Appreciate your time, Scott. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay. So how's this working out for you, Chris? It works great. Works great. Okay. The live show floor. Oh, this is interesting. Let's take a look at it. Hey. Hi, David. You want to give us a brief sure. rundown? Yeah. Um, where do I look? Uh, <laughs> anywhere. No, okay. actually, this is our main camera, and I will point the rest you want of it. pretend like you're working at the computer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. We're ready. Right. Hey, Come I'm uh, Dave Eisenberg. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Floored. Uh, we're based out of New York. Brought with me uh, Andre Dimitrov, who runs our reality capture group. Uh, we do a variety of things in 3D software. Um, what you're seeing here is a uh, real-time 3D visualization uh, streaming through the browser of a new shopping center in New York. We've also got a 3D scanning application for uh, reconstruction of indoor environments uh, into structured, organized, clean 3D models. And we also brought our virtual reality experience with us today where you can explore all these models uh, immersively uh, in VR. Wow, very neat. 
Very cool. So, yeah. How did you capture these, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, there's two. They we're showing a bunch of different stuff today. So some of this is a migration from architectural models into 3D models, okay. and the stuff that's uh, Andre's focused on is actually uh, laser scanned interior environments. Okay. And the laser scan is whatever you want, or the laser scanner. We we right now work off of a scanner that we built. Um, it uses off-the-shelf parts, uh, but we also are agnostic about other sources of data as well. Okay. Sounds great. So what does a package like this cost? Well, we have different prices for different products. Uh, for our 3D visualization work, it can be anywhere from $0.10 cents to $3 a square foot. And then the 3D scan process, uh, we don't sell the hardware right now. We, uh, we run that as a service. And, uh, and most of the stuff we do there is in the $0.10 to $0.20 cents a square foot range. OK. Any questions, Chris, on your end? No, nah, this looks great. So that's an actual. Someone, someone catching in question. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, That's my co-host awesome. is on the other end. This is That's a cool. Google Hangouts on air. We're live. Awesome. So, yeah. Hi, hi, world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this looks great. I can't. So we can check them out. What's a, a, give us a web address? Uh, what's your web address? Floored.com. F L O O R E D. Hey, as a sign behind you says. Great. <laughs> so Chris, are you penciling these in so that later on I can put them in the show notes? Uh, I sure could be. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You. Appreciate your time. Uh, you want to go talk to... No. Or let's talk to Meta Mason. Hi. You want to give us uh, kind of a brief rundown? Sure. Look at that. Um, yeah, we're live. Go ahead. Cool, awesome. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm Charles. I'm from MetaMason. Uh, we're a custom uh, 3D printing sleep apnea mask company. Uh, our company mantra is a scan fit print. Uh, basically, uh, we take a scan of your face, and uh, we use that to build a custom 3D printed sleep apnea mask that's uh, customized for you. Uh, it's designed to be, you know, a perfect seal with your face, and we're doing a fair amount of work with uh, different kinds of elastomers and basic kinds of ways of making uh, whatever touches your face act, behave, and feel exactly like human skin. Um, so yeah, we're really happy to be here. We think this is uh, the right kind of people to get this kind of technology in front of, and we're really excited about the future. Awesome. So can you see those, Chris? Yeah. Very neat. So you, do they take a scan of people's face, or? So you take a scan of people's faces? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we use uh, various numbers of uh, scanning technology. We have a Fuel 3D scanner as well as the occipital. Uh, okay. We use those. They're based off of tablets. So the idea is uh, either you or your doctor will take a scan of your face and then put that into our proprietary algorithm. Um, and we print that out of a out of a, uh, a method of 3D printing, which we get invented, kind of invented along the way, which is called uh, investment molding, which uses a uh, 3D printed wax to make a mold out of which we build... Uh, a mask like this, which is uh, yeah, perfectly conformal to your face. Sounds great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think of the Fuel 3D? Ah, oh, we're liking it. Yeah, it's really uh, it's it's really nice to have something that can just instantly capture a lot of depth, which is you know useful for the kind of diagnostic precision you want to use for the process. Yeah, they still need to work on their software, though. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, we're we're happy with it so far. I mean, they just shipped us out this one that runs off of the tablet. It's uh, it's been a dream to use so far. Oh, okay. So, are you one of their beta testers? Um, I don't know if it's anything because the person's a beta test. Uh, we like them, and they like us, and we see a lot of um, we see a lot of uh, of our paths merging up ahead, uh, depending on what it is they build, or depending on what we what we build. But yeah, we're we're excited to see what they got. Chris, you got any questions? No, I think. No, actually, I okay, actually, my co-host is oh, on the other yeah. end. Sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, so, no questions. No, it looks great. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, you want to stop here? Mateo. Yeah. I see a bunch you of... Know, you know that company right behind me is the guy that stole my design, right? Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. It's interesting, the guy who stole it actually left the booth as soon as I approached. So I think that was kind of funny. I guess I'll meet him later on. So this is Matterport. So their name sounds familiar for some reason. 
I think they were at CES as well. Um, so they're busy. So let's see if we can find something. Else. Oh, okay. So this is uh, Artex. Remember we had them on for an interview? Actually, I did the interview. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. I'm Mike Balzer. Um, we did an interview, I think. Yeah. Okay. You want to give us a little brief rundown? Right. Sure. Hi. My name's Bruce Bateman from Artec. So this is the Artec booth. The Artec booth is a full-body 3D scanner. In a matter of 12 seconds, we can scan you in 3D, head to toe, a 100 micron accurate scan of you. And then we build the objects. And then from there, you go online, you have an option then to buy the statue. But for 3D people, we actually sell the OBJs themselves. So it's a very quick scan. You'll start to see these in the US uh, and uh, in Europe right now. We have about uh, 16 to 18 of these uh, published around the world. So you make little statues, uh, or you can take your OBJ file, and as 3D people, you can do whatever you want with it. Sounds great. And what does the system run? Yeah, actually, he ran from that. We had him on for an interview. It's about $80,000. And um, so as you can see. We're going to put somebody else up there. Oh, OK. So if you want to kind of hang out, I'll come back. OK, I'll come back in about five minutes. So we didn't get a price. That's okay. So the the price uh, of the booth is about uh, between 100 to 180 thousand, depending on how you uh, you get it and what features you get. The models though retail for about 99 to 199, okay. and some bigger models as high as 249 okay. for the models. So the demo or what those about? So the models 10 behind you. What would that cost us? This one is a big one. Uh, I believe this one is about 249. Okay. And this is a full replica of the gentleman standing in the black shirt. Okay. <laughs> it's printed on a Z Corp machine. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Come stand by your mom. <laughs> Very cool. So, so what? Um, actually, what print process are you using for so that? We're printing. So for the print process, we're using the 3D Systems uh, Pro 660, which is a gypsum dust printer, uh, acts like a, a dot matrix printer. So that's how we can actually print in color. And it's the color uh, as well, we have a special process to, for it to maintain the color uh, and to maintain the uh, longevity of the, of the statue. Very neat. Very neat. Thank you very much. Sure. Excellent. Great. One of those. Thank you. Okay. So we'll come back and actually watch the scanning process. But here's uh, some more of their models. Oh, these so, are great. Yeah. Yeah, this now, is going to be the portrait of the future right here. I know. Chris has his own. I have uh, one at home. Mike scanned now, me. Yeah. Now, the resolution is really nice. However, as you and I both know, with my 4 eye system, I can get almost the same amount of faces. And if you remember the one that I just sent you, uh, which I'm going to post up later, I just got that model back, which is still a little bit smaller in scale than these, um, but it has about the same quality. Um, so, you know, again, people will be able to do this in their homes, like Instamatic cameras pretty soon. Or you can go to the booth. Remember the booths back in uh, the mall days where you'd go in there to get your because it was too expensive to own your own camera? That's going to be what's going to be the future in 3D. All right. So I don't know what we've got going on here. So this is the Autodesk booth here. So we're going to go ahead. Tell that guy his Lenovo is infected. <laughs> <laughs> Which guy has a Lenovo? <laughs> My co-host says that your Lenovo is infected, but I don't know that can. <laughs> so Taylor, do you mind giving us a brief rundown of what's going on he here? I think it was funny. So this is Geek 360. Huh? Yes, please. Yeah, I've only got. Uh, so we this is Geek 360. Uh, it's what Autodesk. It's our latest uh, CAD product for developing products. So it's cloud-based. Um, you can see some of the different products that people have designed using Fusion 360. Um, it's be being cloud-based allows you to collaborate. So you might have a dis distributed work team, so you can work together 
Uh, no matter where you are, you can sign into multiple machines and uh, collaborate that way. Um, and it can even bring in some scan data as well. So a lot of the companies here work with scan data, and you can bring it in and uh, manipulate that data directly inside Fusion 360. Great. Actually, I'm a big believer in it. That's what I use to design my products. So very nice. Okay. Very cool. So what else do we have going on here? And point me in there. Actually, we can go back there and look at your, I guess you're using Capture 3D or... Uh, we have uh, Recap and then Memento. Okay. As well as the Ember printer right here. So okay. Ember and Spark platforms for 3D printing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so thank you very much. So actually, Memento is kind of the, what do you want to call it, the big brother of the capture program that you can get on iOS, the photogrammetry application. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if we can get somebody to talk to us. Uh, let's see. Can I get somebody to give us about five minutes to kind of talk about Memento? I would say that Product manager will be in, and uh, she will give a presentation. But she will be definitely the best one to give an interview. Okay. Well, how about just? Product, basically. Yeah. Who was? You want? When will she be back? Uh, Tanya, I can pass. Give me a few seconds. Okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. We'll wait for a few seconds. Memento. Yep. Let's Google Memento. Let's find out a little bit about Memento. Yeah, it, like I said, it's their big brother um, photogrammetry capture application. It's cloud-based, very similar to the other application. I've actually downloaded, haven't had a chance to work with it yet. Um, but uh, the person that's involved with this, we're going to go up and take a look at these models, and I'm going to, I don't think I have an interview with her, but I guess she's one of the speakers that we're missing right now. Um, so as you can see here... She will be preparing for a presentation now, so... Okay, well, actually, I'm going to be going to that presentation. Um, when when so is that, at 11.30? Okay, great. All right, so it's so an actual I'll... Autodesk. It's an actual Autodesk project. That's correct. Yeah, but uh, if you noticed, one of the things that the speaker is doing is she's using it to scan artifacts. And in this case, uh, if you look... Uh-oh. Well, it looks like we lost Mike uh, for a second here. He uh, might be coming in any second. Uh, but uh, Project Memento looks like a uh, some sort of photogrammetry app that Autodesk has put out and uh, by Autodesk Labs. And apparently, it's uh, you know an app cloud-based on your phone or your iPad, and you can. Uh, you can scan, uh, you know, real time. You can scan things. So, um, yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll take a quick break. Uh, Mike is still on the show floor. Up oh, here he comes. He's joining us again. He's from the show floor live at Real 2015. Today is February 25th. It is Wednesday, and it's the first day of the show. And uh, tomorrow I will be joining live uh, from the show floor. And it looks like uh, Mike is trying to join back in. There we go. There we go. You hey. see my camera? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what's the advantage of you running it and not me, because if <laughs> I drop out, you can continue to talk. So um, maybe with the maybe we can switch it, and you can start one up, and then I can join you a little bit later if we have a more some more discussions. Okay, but you can see my camera again. I can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can see you. Yes. The answer is yes. And you can hear me as well. And I can hear okay. you great. Yeah, you sound great. Okay. All right. So, okay, so it looks like there is a presentation coming up. I'm going to go ahead and, and get a seat. But uh, we'll scan real quick. But it looks like the person providing the. Uh, so. Hi, you got a moment to talk with us? Sure. Hey. Hi, how are you? 
I'm good. How are you? Okay, so you're a special guest here. So what do you do? I am a spokesmodel for Unique.com. They are a aesthetic covers company that produces 3D printed fairings that are made to be aesthetically pleasing and both symmetrically pleasing for amputees. So it gives us a sense of wholeness, gives us a little bit of uh, individuality, lets us kind of enjoy that feeling of wholeness that a lot of us miss. And it also allows us to really create a custom identity within ourselves. You know, we have the ability to show people who we are and what we can do despite our disabilities or differences. So Unique really helps with that. It's really cool. I like it. So it's do you have good. something here that you can show us what yeah, you've done? I'm actually wearing the Lisette fairing here. This uh. is the Lisette. And it's a three-part system right now, but it's going to change. It's the front uh, U-joint and then the back. And it all links on and sticks on there pretty good. Really hurdy. and very oh. strong. And then we have these ones here. This one's the Kerbin. And then this is our Revet. And they're all 3D printed. So you can wow. take photographs of, the, of your leg at home with special little stickers they give you. And then you send those photographs in. You don't even have to go anywhere. Okay. And they 3D print it for you. And they just mail it straight to you. So... Um, so essentially, you put stickers on using photogrammetry. They are able to compile a 3D model from that, and then yeah. the 3D printed, then send it back to you. Mm -hmm. You okay. can print out a set of uh, stickers that basically go over both your prosthetic side, and then they also do a scan of your sound side or your sound leg, um, and they basically mimic that exact shape, okay. mirror image to the other side, to give you a very symmetrical and very whole look. Um, for people who are missing both of their limbs, basically what they do is they actually work with the person to their most desired aesthetic, and then they produce two mirror image fairings for both of the legs. So they don't just do it for one person with one leg. They've got it for multiple people with multiple different kinds of amputations, above knee, below knee, all sorts of things. So it's really cool. Yes, very neat. Chris, you got any questions? So what process uh -huh. did they use to 3D print these? What's the process used to 3D print them? Um, yeah, it's a 3D printing process. So basically it's all rendered and then it's thrown into that program and it just zips it right out for you and it's ready to go within a few hours. Okay. So do you know what type of material that is? This is a polythomide shatterproof plastic. Um, and so it's very durable, very easy to maintain, very quick to fix. I actually have a patch-up kit and every single one comes with them. So if you get a little ding or a scratch, you can very quickly paint over it and make it look like new again. And it's really easy, too. It's great. Wow. Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah. You mind if I touch it? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Tap on it, too. It's, it's not going to break. Need it on my head. <laughs> <laughs> that might which, which 3D <laughs> printing <Not> process? <laughs> which process was used to yeah. 3D print it, though? You can, you can go to the website and look up all of them. And they've got designs for kids. They've got designs for men, women of all ages. And they also do custom designs, too, like my Lisette. Okay. Um, which is now available for purchase for other people as well. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's the what's the cost and what's the company again? The cost varies from fairing to fairing. Um, right now, the lowest fairing I believe is around the 400 mid 400s range, about 495. Um, and then they kind of differentiate, you know, with with the different designs and things. And then custom, of course, is going to be a custom price because it's a custom device. Um, and then they also work with some insurance companies and premiums. So there's some insurance companies that are now paying for the production and reimbursement of these. Oh. Um, and they have all these hubs, too, that work with you as well. So if you can't figure out what to do, you can just go into the hub and say, hey, I want one, but I don't have money. And they tell you how you can procure one. Okay. And my, my co-host, who's actually on the other end, we're live, he's asking what type of printer was used to print these? I'm literally a 3D printer. The, the, the basic 3D printers that you that you usually get, very expensive ones. I don't remember the actual brand name of it, but um, the software is, of course, Autodesk software. Okay. Um, but the 3D printer, I'm not sure what the name of the 3D printer is, the type of 3D printer that you guys have. Um, <laughs> don't know, but it's okay. cool. <laughs> very All neat. I know is it's 3D and it prints. <laughs> okay, well, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. Have a great day. Yeah, bye. Right. Thank you. Pretty neat. Awesome. Yeah.
So you're going to go grab a seat at this uh, presentation? Well, I'll probably stand in the background. So let's take a look at this again, and maybe Kim can tell us a little bit about something that I wanted but couldn't afford right now. I was on your list and couldn't take advantage of it. Oh, no. Well, we are actually, Ember is shipping. So this is Ember. Uh, this is Autodesk's new 3D printer. It is an SLA DLP machine. Um, it is being assembled here in California right now. And um, I guess what, what uh, we have some samples over here that you might want to see to show the ultra high okay. um, resolution of Ember. So this is a model that we just created, Shalom here, created um, to replicate human hair. So this is actually finer than human hair. Wow. Um, you, and, can you and, give us a micron measurement? Sure. So um, Ember will actually print um, as low as 10 microns on the z-axis. A lot of these are printed at 25 microns, and still there's amazing definition um, in those prints. Okay, now that's the z-axis. What's your xy? The xy... 50 microns. 50. Okay, that's yep. still pretty good. I think the form one is about a close. I think it's like a hundred, if I remember correctly. I think so it's so. like half that. Okay. Um, and so, what's interesting here? What you see here is that this is a it's a DLP style SLA printer. So there's a digital light projection uh, projector inside that's projecting up UV light uh, into this photosensitive resin to cure it layer by layer. So the build head dips down into the resin tray kind of builds from the bottom down. Okay. Well, it's got a compact design. If it's a, as you mentioned, a, a DLP type projector, are they using LEDs on this particular model? Do you know? Okay. Great. So um, that's... And then this actually represents the um, maximum build volume. So it is ultra high resolution, but it is a fairly compact machine. Yeah, and that that is one of the disadvantages, but at the same time, compared to some of the others out there, it's about compatible or competitive with the volume size. Yeah, yeah. And we're finding a lot of interest um, with Ember from the jewelry market, uh, dental market, um, small electronic components, um, and then actually the uh, miniatures market. Now, what type of uh, materials do you work with? Uh, so we developed um, a photo curable resin that's great for prototyping. Um, we are working on some additional resins, but one of the things that's important about Ember is it is an open machine. So it will, you can see here the resin tray um, itself, it is open, so it can accept resins, photosensitive resins from anyone who makes them. Um, okay. And then the settings are designed that they can be customized to work with all of those. Okay. So we've actually interviewed a company called Made Solid, who I think had a beta version. So I think Made yes. Solid makes. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, and they actually had. Hey, hey, I don't think he was supposed to tell me, but he was so excited about it. He says, oh, it's a fabulous printer, and obviously um, it is. Sadly, and the price, if I remember correctly, for when, when I was offered was 6000 Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, so, so right now um, what we have is $5,995. That includes the Ember printer, um, two resin trays, two build heads, and a bottle of resin. Okay. Now, when I was at CES, you had another device that um, was your cleaner? It was. Um, processing. And we were saying, I want one of those now. I've got two uh, UV-based printers, so are you going to market or make that available for sale outside, let's say, if I don't get one of these? Yeah. We are working on that. Okay. Yeah. Still working on still it. Work, still a work in progress. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, great. I really appreciate your time. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. So we're going to head over and